Howdy y'all, welcome back to lives. I think it's time to play a little... Hmm. Seven days to die. I was hoping that would uh, fix my abrasion. Uh, oh, aloe cream. And first aid bandages. Can I put aloe cream on it now? No. That didn't shorten anything. Well, I am low on bullets. Ooh, could we stay on the ladder, please? Thank you. Uh, so I have got to go get supplies for gunpowder again. So let's go ahead and head out that way. I think this is the way to my... Yeah. My supplies are out this way. Um... Yeah, we didn't uh, we didn't get to play Starfinder this week. Uh, I don't know why the one guy didn't show up. I mean, I texted him and he said he couldn't make it. That was it. That was the end of it. <laughs> um, I really wanted to have everybody together to uh, start the D and D that I set up so that we could still play on nights when we didn't have enough people. But I feel like we're just going to start that next time. I've been putting it off because I wanted everybody to be there for the start. But, I mean, the guy who who I basically was making it to rep uh, so we could play when he doesn't show up uh, still hasn't made his characters. So, um, I don't know. It's just one of those things I, uh, <laughs> I've talked about before. I find it irritating when you ask somebody if they want to do something and they say yes and then they act like they don't want to do it. Like, uh, it's fine if you don't want to do it. I don't... We played without you before. I. It's not like we need you now. Uh, if you don't want to play, that's fine. We can easily easily run extra characters on our own. But we can't do that if you don't say I'm not playing. So yeah. Uh we did uh we did however get uh some announcements this week. I didn't I didn't watch the announcements. Um but I did read through a synopsis of some of the things that had happened. Um, and that is, uh, they announced the next version of D&D. &D, uh, which is a big deal. Uh, I mean, it's it's 50 years. Uh, I think it's right about 50 years old. And... Um, and so the fact that... Uh, they're releasing their sixth-ish edition uh, is, uh, you know, a pretty big deal. Uh, each edition is usually uh, different than the previous editions, but this time uh, it seems like it's going to be similar enough that you will be able to use the fifth edition stuff without <sighs> too big of changes. I am trying to work here. Punched you right in the fist. Oh, he's moving fast. I don't like it. Why was he moving so fast? There we go. And, um... So it seemed interesting. Uh, they today was the first release of the playtest materials, so that you can take a look at uh, the beta alpha version of the the new content, uh, the new rule book, and um, so uh, I I do have to say I think the name is a little weird. They're calling it D and D one. Uh, 
but uh, uh, it's not supposed to be finalized until sometime in 2024. Um, but uh, today they released the they released the uh, character origins playtest material. And um, so it was it was a little different. Uh, I've made a lot of characters now in fifth edition. Uh, and so I do I do see how these are gonna be some uh, I don't know if they say big changes, but I'm trying to work here. Uh, but they did some, uh, they did some different things, like, um, one of my favorite races in the game is the half-orc, and, um, basically, basically they have the orc as a bad guy, and then the half-orc is... Not a good guy, but a, a player race. Because uh, players don't have to be good guys. But, um, like, the orc was was not, uh, in 5th edition at the beginning, was not a player race. Uh, but as the, as the game progressed, um, and they added more and more stuff to it, they did eventually add in orcs as a playable race. What am I hitting? I feel like I'm looking at coal and an iron vein or something. But, uh, yeah, so they've done away with the half races uh, in this playtest. Uh, instead, they just have the full-blown races. And then if you want a half race, you're supposed to make your own half race. Uh, and so... The issue I see with it right now, obviously this is a, like an alpha version, beta version, whatever. Must be, a, I would call this a beta version, right? Because it's a alpha version would be just the uh, just the uh, Wizards of the Coast people get to see it. So this is this is the version that everybody gets to see before they make changes. And I am fairly certain changes are coming uh, because they didn't put a limit on the half races stuff. And so I don't, I don't see how, how they're going to be able to uh, do half races the way the rules are written because no one would ever play. Okay. I, Obviously, people would play just pure blood races, but min max people, uh, people who want the best character possible, are never ever going to play full blood races uh, because they didn't limit how the races mix together. And what I mean by that is you take one race human and then you take your orc race and you just combine them uh and I, I looked through it and i could not find anywhere in there where it said there was a limit on how many features from one race you took to put in the other to make your half race it said just mix them together which is fine if you're just looking at 
Uh, you know what? It's really hard to see this. Which is fine if you're um, talking about like their their physical features, like what kind of ears do they have, how tall are they, things like that. That's fine. Um, but they also are talking about the racial abilities that come with the different races. So if you want to play a human, why would you ever play a human that didn't have half something and just make your character completely look like a human, um, but give yourself the four or five racial abilities of something else. Uh, and so I, I feel like they've got to put a limit on how many racial abilities carry over. Um, because, <laughs> so an example is humans have like, I think it's four. I think humans have four racial abilities, right? And then the orc, the orc also has like four or five racial abilities. Uh, and with the rules the way they're written, it really looks to me like you could then make a human with nine racial abilities. And not all of them are small things. Like, some of them are like wings to fly with, right? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think they're, uh, I think they're probably going to have to tone that down and be like, you can choose four abilities between the two races. Uh, otherwise, who would ever, ever people who don't care <laughs> people who don't have a reason to pick a pureblood race why would you ever pick a pureblood race? Because you can choose what you look like and you're just going for extra abilities. And it just seems like too much to me. Um, and then, uh, so I thought that was really, really bizarre. Um, the races used to, uh, in, uh, what's a word I want? To grant. There we go. Uh, the races used to grant, or currently grant, uh, skill bonuses. No, that's not what I wanted. Stat bonuses. So, like, an uh, orc is strong, right? And so the orc gives you bonus to strength and then, like, one extra stat point you can put wherever. Uh, and, uh, well, they've taken that away. So now the races don't have stat bonuses anymore. Um, which means the only reason you pick your race is for aesthetic purposes or uh, or their special abilities. Um, things like humans get an extra feat. Um, what was the name of the... There's a new race in there. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, there's actually a couple of new races in there. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, maybe I go with human and I think it's like Alder or something. And then I give myself wings, uh, and, you know, dark vision and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, uh, I f I'm, this is not, I need coal, not stone. So yeah, that was it. Was interesting to to read through some of that, um, but the uh, the stat bonuses. Oh, I got confused. I got distracted. I got off on a tangent again. Uh, I was talking about stats, stats, <laughs> uh, and so you know, like humans, humans. I think just got like a plus one, plus one to everything. Um. Uh, but then humans don't get like dark vision. Humans can't see in the dark, right? Uh, and then, um, so now, now that's all part of your background instead of your race, uh, which is an interesting choice. 
I, I mean, I kind of get it, because the, the idea, right, is, like, your stats would increase based on what you've done. And so, like, if you if you were a fighter uh, in your background, then obviously you probably swang, swang, swung, swang, sw swang? I think it's swang. Swang. <laughs> I'm going to stop saying that word. You probably used heavy, you know, m melee weapons more than, say, a librarian, right? And so, I'm not seeing any coal down here, man. Where's my coal? I need more coal. Um, so it makes sense that you, you would get your, your stats from that, I guess. Uh, and then, uh, they changed languages. Uh, languages used to be like, you got, you got a language, you got, like common and then you'd get a maybe a language from your background and then uh the rest of it was based off of your intelligence score and so now it's uh everybody gets three languages um i didn't see anything in there on how to learn new languages so maybe that's going to come later but uh everybody gets three languages they get common they get the language from their background, and then they get to pick a language. Uh, and then um, uh, you get your skill proficiencies now come from your background. I think those always came from your background. Uh, your background. They, they don't have um, classes in there yet, so I don't know what your class will give you. Uh, it's just character origins, they called it. And then... Um, uh, uh, the languages that your background gives you are specific now instead of this character gets to pick a extra language. Now it's a specific specific language. Uh, you also get a feat now at first level, which is not a thing in 5th edition unless you took uh, certain, certain races would get a feat. Um, so now uh, the actual background grants a feat. So the only one I have written down here is Acolyte. So like Acolyte would uh, uh, be someone, right, who works with um, like in a church or something. And so they get um, they get uh, plus two to wisdom, uh, plus one to intelligence. Uh, their skill proficiencies are insight and religion. Uh, their tool proficiency, uh, is calligrapher's supplies. Uh, their language is celestial. Uh, and then, uh, for their first feat, they get, uh, magic initiate, divine magic. Uh, and then, uh, there's also some, uh, equipment from your background as well. I think, I think back, uh, backgrounds gave equipment before, but this is, this seemed a bit more... Maybe not. Uh, I guess it seems about the same. Uh, so you get a little bit of equipment from your background, and then you probably get the rest from your class. Um, uh, one of the big changes was uh, feats now have uh, levels. Uh, so they didn't release the entire list of feats. They just released a handful of first-level feats. So... Um, I don't know what that's going to look like in the long run. Uh, but, uh, and my abrasion is like, mm, I'm sticking around, man. I'm going to take longer. Don't you know this game is 
designs such as stand around for 20 minutes waiting for your wounds to go away or else you aggravate them. Uh, um, but yes, yeah, so that was uh, uh, that's very different that uh, feats have levels. I mean, I, I guess it makes it easier to look through your feats if you can only get them if you have the appropriate level or it's lower than that, right? Like, I, I don't know how the feats are going to work. So if you get a feat at level 4, let's say, then you should be able to choose from level 4 and level 1 feats, I would assume. Um, and then... Uh, um, what else we got going on here? Uh, so, uh, when you roll... When you roll the 20-sided dice in the game uh, and you get a 20, we call that a nat 20. And uh, and then... And then uh, if you roll a 1, we call that a nat 1. Natural 20, natural 1. Uh, and so in 5th edition... If you were attacking with a weapon or your fist or something like that, then a uh, natural 20 would mean that you automatically hit. Uh, they call it a crit. And you would also do extra damage. Uh, if you roll a nat 1, that's a crit fail. And uh, that means you automatically miss. Um... And those did not apply to things like skill checks or saving throws. Uh, and so that's a change. Uh, now, nat 1 means you fail. Oh, that was my thing breaking. I was like, did I drop something? Uh, so now if you roll a 1, it's a fail, whether it's an attack or a skill check or a saving throw, they're all affected by now. On the opposite of that, which I don't like, uh, is, I mean, I don't like the negative one affecting things either, because, uh, like, there's an idea that the better you become at something, right, the less likely you are to fail. So if you're a, if you're a level 15 whatever, uh, rogue, we'll say, and you're picking a lock, then the chances of you failing to pick a lock should be pretty non-existent, right? Um, like, if it's a really hard lock, sure. But just a regular lock, you're probably not going to fail to pick a regular lock. So now there's a chance that you can fail to pick the lock. Uh, and, uh, uh, and on the opposite end of that, it means that uh, you can't set... <laughs> You can't set checks too high for someone to succeed. Although I think it did say it had to be between 5 and 30 for that to apply. So I don't I don't know. It's it's weird. It's a weird change. Um uh -huh. we talked about uh we actually discussed uh, I came up with the idea um apparently I should have been reading the forums but I came up with the idea because our, our DM doesn't like our hero point system that maybe we should use nat 20s as the thing that gives you inspiration. And so that's in the rules now. Um, uh, a DM can still give you inspiration if they want, but if you get a nat 20, you get an inspiration now. So that's cool. That's cool that uh, there's a non-whim way to get uh, to get inspiration, uh, they also change inspiration. Uh, I think in the book it's a a D six in fifth edition, but most people just do uh, advantage. Probably um, most people I've seen just do advantage, and um, uh, and so that's the way it is in the the new information. Uh, so instead of Instead of doing um, just the plus six, you'll just get to re-roll. Take the higher of the two. 
Somewhere I have a bike. There you are. Let's head home so I can get some gunpowder going. Actually, let's head over here and turn my quest in, I guess. Sell this gold. Uh, let's see. Uh, and, uh, I don't know if it's just because they don't have the next section done yet, but they have some rules in there for grappling, which are not like the current grappling rules. Uh, I'll take some antibiotics, I guess. And then let's take a uh, fetch and clear. Can I see what you've got for sale, too? Because I need to sell this gold. And I want to sell all this money. Uh, what do we got? We got, um, we're looking for anything steel related or upgrades. Uh, or I guess. Um, no, I don't, I don't see anything. He just say careful out there. He was nice to me. That was weird. He's been so mean every other time. Uh, but yeah, uh, so grappling in the game is, uh, in 5th edition, is currently um, you roll a skill check of athletics, and then it's contested, which means the person you're trying to grapple also rolls, and they roll an athletics or an acrobatics and see which one uh, is higher. And the new rule says the person grappling uh, is a static number. So it's eight plus your strength modifier plus your proficiency. And then the person you're trying to grapple will roll either a strength or a... Um, athletic, uh, no, a strength or a dexterity saving throw. Um, so that completely changes how grappling works. It becomes a saving throw instead of an action on the part of the person trying to do the grappling. Um, which I don't think I like. Uh... I gotta think about that one. Because the way it is now... See, the way it is now is you have the D20 added into it. And there isn't any of that. So you're losing the D20 and they're giving you eight. <laughs> It's not, it's not as good. Uh, I don't know why they would take away the character role from that. Uh, it's how... It's how... Um, Oh shoot, I found some silver, and I didn't sell it. It's how uh, the roll works for... Um, trip attacks, though. Because those are also 8 plus strength mod plus proficiency.
Hmm. Because that's a that's a. I think that's a contested thing, though. That's a, they roll athletics or acrobatics. They don't roll a save. Do they roll a saving throw? Man, I might need to look at that again. We won't be doing that wrong when I do a trip attack. Uh... But yeah, so that was um that was most of the new stuff. Uh Oh, uh spells are now in three categories, which I, I guess they've probably always been, but I never noticed there was a primal category. Uh and uh And then they also um I need bullets before I can go do this thing. Hey, what if I want to make uh, steel knuckles? What am I missing for that? Thirty four steel, fifteen steel knuckle parts. And I've got fourteen forged steel. And I have got two steel knuckle parts. Uh, but I did get closer to getting that lucky looter up another another level. Twenty percent to my loot bonus. Trying to get better loots. Um, but yeah, they uh, they also uh, let's see a couple couple more little things about the changes. Um, the new book came up for pre-order uh, today, and it was a Dragonlance book, which is a different setting for D&D than they've released for 5th edition. Sort of. I feel like Dragonlance is so close to what they've already got that... It's been a long time since I read some Dragonlance novels, but I don't remember it being that different from the current Faerun setting not enough to not enough to warrant like i don't know like eberron eberron sure because it's a little more uh magitechy uh right magical technology uh and then they've got like some magic the gathering based stuff because you know they make both magic the gathering and dungeons and dragons sure um, Spelljammer is enough different that I can understand why Spelljammer came out this week. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, Spelljammer was pretty cool this week. Uh, uh, book's got a lot of fun ships, um, because Spelljammer is about flying space, or flying, uh, I guess you could call them airships. And so they've got, like, um, you know, like insect ships with legs that land on the ground and, Ships with hammerhead rams and ships with spikes that pierce other ships and ships with claws, ships with stinger tails, ships with tentacles, uh, you know, lots of stuff like that. Um, and then, uh, uh, but like Spelljammer was different enough that I can understand why they'd release a book on Spelljammer. But they released the next year's worth of books. And none of them are Dark Sun, which I was really hoping for some Dark Sun. Uh, it's like one of the top requested, um, one of the top requested expansions for Fifth Edition, and they just aren't doing it for some reason. I don't know. Um, uh, 
I feel like the people who uh, make the books probably don't like that setting necessarily. Um, uh, and then, um, uh, so the new book, the Dragonlance book came out today and I went to pre-order it and uh, they purchased D&D Beyond, which is a digital tool set for Dungeons & Dragons, lets you make your character sheets and stuff, and it was being run by another company, so they purchased that uh, earlier this year. And so the Dragonlance book is the first book that uh, will be sold as a digital or a hard copy with a digital coupon so that you can get both the hardcover and the digital at the same time. Uh, I will say, though, the digital was $30 and the hard copy was $60. Uh, and I don't know if that's more expensive than the hard copies normally are or not. Um, although chances are you can find the hard copies someplace else than what I was looking at. Uh, and then um, they also said they're working on a map system so you can play the game all through D&D uh, &D Beyond um, and play it on their virtual tabletop. Uh, and it looked pretty slick, the images they had of it. So um, I don't know how long it'll be before that comes out, but uh, I'm looking forward to that too. But all right, with that, I'm going to call it a day. So be wearing the small things, lean to the light, and I will talk to you later.